Hey folks, today is Friday, May 26th, 2023. As usual, my name is Jake Baldino, here to talk about all the video game news that has been going on this week, and it's a chock full week for obvious reasons, so we got a lot to talk about. Just a note, public service announcement. I said this last week too, but the Friday show is going to start going live a couple of hours earlier on Friday. Just wanted to get the word out, so I always get messages like, where's the Friday show? Uh, so just a couple of hours earlier, it'll probably show up in your sub box every Friday from now on. Just always look for the video with the title in all caps. It's annoying, but that's how you could find the Friday show. Anyway, let's just jump right in. Uh, the first bit of news involves Ubisoft's next game. Now we know a lot of what's coming down the pipeline, Skull and Bones still, uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage. They've still got that Avatar Frontiers of Pandora game in the works, but during an investor thing a couple of days ago, uh, they did go on record and talk about the next fiscal year, which runs through March, 2024. And uh, they talked about Avatar, Skull and Bones, all that stuff, but also an unannounced game. They said that, and I quote, another large game uh, will be showing up in the next 12 months. And now alongside that, Kotaku is now reporting, citing inside sources, from with the matter, that that game will be Ubisoft's Star Wars game. Now we know that Ubisoft has gotten a Star Wars gig and that they have been working on something. And apparently this would be the one being developed by Massive, uh, the people behind The Division. So for a lot of people, like it feels like it's coming sooner than we expected. But you know, with the amount of money and budget behind something like Star Wars, I'm not surprised they got something going. Uh, and there's also a lot of speculation that Ubisoft has just been desperate for a big hit lately, and they're hoping that Star Wars possibly is. Who knows? Star Wars games can go either way. I've been happy with quite a few of them lately, but with Ubisoft at the helm, you never know. Now, the Kotaku report does say that this game is going to be very different from the previous games that Massive has worked on, so it's not going to be like The Division plus Star Wars, but all of this reporting, of course, it's just rumors and inside sources, so still take it all with a grain of salt, but that's the deal right now. If you want to read up on all that, it will be linked in the description down below with everything else I talk about this week, so yeah. Now we got to talk video game prices. In the United States, most modern AAA uh, current gen games are now $70, and uh, a lot of us have been feeling the pain point with that, the price increase, and uh, it seems like game publishers are <laughs> loving it. Uh, unfortunately, I guess, for our wallets. Uh, this comes from uh, the head of one of the bigger game publishers, Take-Two Interactive, uh, head Strauss Zelnick. Take-Two Interactive, of course, as you know, is behind so many things, including, of course, uh, they own Rockstar Games and the whole Grand Theft Auto thing. They had their earnings call on Wednesday, and there's a lot of interesting quotes from it. And when asked about video game prices and how that was changing things, Zel Zelnick responded, and I quote, we're not seeing a pushback on frontline price. What we're seeing is consumers are seeking to limit their spending by going either to the stuff they really, really care about, blockbusters, or to value, and sometimes it could be both. And the good news is we have a bunch of blockbusters and we have a wonderful catalog. Good for you. <laughs> This is not the first quote from head video game leadership people. Uh, there have been other ones saying kind of like, hey, people are complaining, but they're still buying. And yeah, here we are. So I guess $70 is definitely here to stay. Pour one out, pour one out for our wallets. I'm not gonna make a mess, but yeah, you get it. Along with that, on a lighter note on this earnings call, uh, somebody did ask Zelnick about uh, AI and tools and how that's all going and how uh, Take-Two and their publishers and subsidiaries are going to use that. He did talk about how he's usually skeptical of things that are like blown out of proportions, but uh, that made an interesting point that uh, essentially video game companies have been dealing with machine learning and artificial intelligence of different sorts for many, many years now. But then he goes on to say, our view is that AI will allow us to do a better job and to do a more efficient job. You're talking about tools and they are simply better and more effective tools. But in terms of like, will games start to make Hits, like, you know, will the next Grand Theft Auto or the next like NBA 2K made majoritively by artificial intelligence? He said in a quote, I wish I could say the advances in AI will make it easier to create hits. Obviously it won't. Hits are created by genius and data sets plus compute plus large language models does not equal genius. Genius is the domain of human beings and I believe will stay that way. I'm not one to usually like prop up quotes from CEOs, but I just like that last part. What do you guys think? AI and games, it's a very hot topic. I like the idea of AI essentially generating 
NPC dialogue and weird tricks like that and, you know, things to make developers' lives easier, but at the end of the day, I don't want it to get to the level of, like, they're writing entire video game scripts or coming up with concepts, you know what I mean? Granted, that is scratching the surface of this complex topic. We need more time, a whole video for that, but I definitely want to know what you guys are thinking on the surface, at least. Next up, of course, PlayStation had their big showcase. Uh, this was a big event for them. They haven't had a big mainline one like this uh, in years, so people were expecting very big things. And and we highlighted all of our favorite things. I think about like a top 20 things announced in a video like a day or two ago. So I'm going to link that down in the description. We can't do a whole play by play here in this video. Uh, the news has already come and went. So check up on that if you want. But just overall analysis of the event, like some people don't think it was exciting enough with like big first party games. I will say this is very much showing the Sony that we've been hearing about for a couple of years now, making acquisitions, talking very much how they want to pivot to having some free to play and some live service type games and expanding that portfolio. And you, we're seeing that front and center here. Haven Studios, uh, Jade Raymond's studio, it seems like just like a multiplayer co-op type of deal. Uh, there's that other one, Concord, that seems like it's going to be a multiplayer affair. Those types of games, especially like when it's a cinematic trailer and the characters very much just look like multiplayer game characters. That stuff doesn't really appeal to me too much as a player. I am here for more of the big single player experiences as you guys probably know. And thankfully we did see some interesting stuff. So if you're looking for just like my top quick picks of the show, they might be obvious to some, but uh, Helldivers 2 looks really sweet. I think the little bit of a change in perspective, the over the shoulder type thing uh, is a little bit of a bummer, but I still think this just looks fun to play. So I'm definitely looking forward to checking more of that out. Alan Wake 2, you know, I'm a sucker for a remedy at this point. Uh, uh, two different characters, two different locations, actually really backing up what they said months ago when they said it was gonna be survival horror. It clearly looks like that here. It looks absolutely wild. As of right now, they said that they're not uh, releasing the game physically, which sucks. They had their ex explanation, but I'm not into it. So we're gonna have to see where that goes. THQ actually tweeted Remedy and was like, hey, We'll, we'll publish it physically for you, so we'll see where that goes. A lot of people tag me in Sword of the Sea because it looks like a Jake Baldino-ass game. Uh, your, some of your quotes, not mine, uh, because it is uh, another game from the people who made Journey and Abzu, Giant Squid, uh, and it is a game where you're kind of like surfing, snowboarding, skateboarding. You're gliding on a magical sword through like a weird desert ocean. And that just looks cool as hell, man. I want to play that. Hey, next up, this episode is brought to you by our longtime sponsor, Vessi. You know, the cool, comfy sneakers we talk about all the time. These are the dependable kicks that we've been recommending for like almost like two years now. Uh, they come in all different types of sizes, shapes, colors, so everyone is covered. They're sustainably made, and the best feature is that they're 100% waterproof. Like, for real. It sounds cheesy, but the first time you dip your foot in a big old puddle, it does feel like magic. It's made from Dymatex, a dual-knit climate material that essentially keeps your feet cool in the summer and warm in the winter and always dry. So join the Dry Socks Club. You kind of get a little fearless with what you can do with these sneakers and what you can step in. Personally, they're my shoes right by the door, my go-tos for when I want to walk my dog or play with them outside or something like that. I have them on right now. They're a little dirty, but they are also thankfully nice and washable because they're waterproof. You just spray them right off. So take advantage of Vessi's Memorial Day sale and save up to 30% on a variety of different styles available at Vessi.com slash Game ranks. And in case you missed the sale, you can still get 15% off by using code GAMERANKS at checkout. Don't wait too long to grab your favorite pair of Vessi shoes because they're always popping off. So Vessi.com slash GAMERANKS and big thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Also, of course, uh, Metal Gear Solid 3. Metal Gear Solid 3 is being remade. Uh, it's Konami. It's a development studio. We don't really know who's making it. I suspect it's the studio, the kind of port studio uh, that has been rumored for months. But in the fall, we're also getting like a, a Metal Gear Master Collection that's going to be Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, and 3 on modern consoles and Steam which is nice. It's gonna have some of the other goodies that weird nerds like me care about in there, uh, and it's a volume one, implying that there might eventually be a volume two if Konami gets enough money, probably. <laughs> uh, so maybe we'll see a port of Metal Gear Solid 4 at some point. Please, God, get that thing off the PS3. The Metal Gear Solid 3 remake itself, though, you guys know how I feel. I've talked about this a lot. I'm a diehard Metal Gear Solid fan from the 1998 Metal Gear Solid uh, when I first laid eyes on it. So I am super particular and super picky, uh, and I'm also deep in the video game news world, so I'm real jammed up about how Konami handles things, how the Hideo Kojima thing went down. I'm happy that it's just a remake. They're not making like a Metal Gear Solid 6 or anything. I just don't think Metal Gear Solid 3 really needed to be remade, and I was happy with those games just 
being untouched. Still, I'm not raining on anybody's parade. I'll, people seem really excited about it. I will play it, I'll give it a shot. Maybe I'll have some fun seeing how it's different, how it's the same. There are some screenshots out there already. I talk about this more in depth on a video on my channel, youtube.com slash Jake Baldino, if you wanna hear about that, but I'm just being a whiny baby. Either way, I'm glad that the original games are going to be ported again, and hopefully Konami doesn't screw that up, and then it's gonna be more accessible for more people. So. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see how this goes, but there's that. And then last but certainly not least, Spider-Man 2. Insomniac is upping the ante. We got Symbiote Suit, Peter Parker uh, doing the like shocker thing from the animated series. I love that. The move sets look crazy. It looks like we're getting access to possibly Brooklyn and Queens now. We got to see character switching in action. We got to see Lizard and Craven the Hunter. A lot of new moves. Miles Morales has a lot more powers. There's a lot going on. Like it is just like visual crazy overload. But I really like how Insomniac has told Spider-Man stories, so I'm still just really looking forward to this one. So again, like I said, if you want the whole nitty gritty, the full breakdown, I will link that video in the description down below. It might pop up at the end of this video, like after this video, so yeah. Just let me know what are some of your favorite things from the showcase. We definitely would like to know so we can figure out what types of videos to make. Next up, a little bit of a Mortal Kombat 1 update for you. Ed Boon, co-creator of Mortal Kombat, uh, went on a Mortal Kombat stream to talk about how uh, this is apparently the one that they've spent the most time working on in the series, which is very interesting because I feel like their process would be kind of streamlined by now. But uh, yeah, apparently it is the one they spent the most time on and uh, it's going to be really reflective once we see gameplay. And we know now that we're going to see gameplay at Jeff Keighley's Summer Game Fest thing, June 8th. We're going to get a gameplay reveal of that. Uh, we had Jeff Keighley on the podcast I do with my friends. It's called Friends Per Second. Uh, he went in depth a little bit with that. Uh, we also got to ask Jeff Keighley what he thinks of the Metal Gear remake. And that's an interesting conversation. Uh, so that goes live on Saturday and I will link that when it shows up. Also, just PSA, Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun is out. I didn't get time to do it before you buy, but I absolutely love this game. It is the genre now being dubbed Boomer Shooter. It is an old school 90s style PC FPS set in the Warhammer universe. I barely know anything about Warhammer, but I love a good shooter like this. It's bunny hopping, it's guts, it's blood, it's explosions. It's really, really fun. It's a good retro th throwback, but a lot of fun to play if you've never played those types of games. So like, I, I can't recommend it enough if this at least kind of appeals to you. I just really wanted to give that a shout. I will link a video to it or a review to it down in the description. But also, uh, it's worth pointing out, we did get a little new glimpse at Space Marine 2 gameplay. Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 has been something that we've known about for a while. It has gotten trailers, but uh, we got this kind of weird trailer that's just a couple of cuts and snippets of straight up gameplay. And it's nice to see. Just a bunch of murder. <laughs> <laughs> Woo also, speaking of murder, uh, the internet has murdered Gollum. What a headline, sorry. Yeah, the game dropped and it's, it's rough. It's a, it's, it's a rough game. It's really simple, it's glitchy, it's buggy. My biggest issue with it was that it just wasn't fun. We put out a Before You Buy on that if you do want to check it out. I don't like when games suck. Like I actually, everybody was making fun of this idea, but like I was curious to see how it could go. I thought there was a good idea for a Gollum game somewhere, but unfortunately, this isn't it, and it's a bummer. Hardcore, I'm talking like hardcore Lord of the Rings fans might have a couple of things they could find with this one, but it's it's rough to play. Also, we just got a bunch of new stuff on that Alone in the Dark game. So we got new gameplay from this developer doc type video, and there's this whole IGN exclusive thing that I'll link, and the game does look pretty cool. I still don't know about like the combat, but like the puzzles and exploring the mansion uh, just seem totally dripping in the atmosphere I want as a survivor horror fan person but uh, it's worth noting that they've now officially announced that actress Jodie Comer or Comer I don't know how to say her name she's playing Emily Hartwood and then David Harbour is Edward Carnby which I think is really cool I don't know I just like David Harbour a lot and it'll be cool to play kind of as him see his spin on the character I don't know but uh there is a demo kind of prologue thing that's available to download now on PC and the current gen consoles but the main game now we officially know is releasing October 25th of this year, so there's that. Also, just another PSA, uh, Tears of the Kingdom. A lot of people are still playing it. We're seeing crazy creations online and new discoveries and secrets all the freaking time with this game. It's massive. Uh, and now at this point, there's like that 10 day thing on your Switch, on your Nintendo account, where you can start to actually finally see your hour count, your play count. So we're getting past the like played in the last 10 days and now uh, players are seeing just how much time they've spent in this world. So uh, 
Drop your hour count in the comments below. D d no shame. If you've only got two hours, that's fine, dude. If you've got 20 hours, that's cool. If you've got 800 hours, how how are you doing? I, either way, just wanted to share. And uh, we gotta get going. We are working on a lot more before you buys for upcoming games. So keep your eyes peeled next week. Got some stuff in the works. But I wanna know what you're thinking about all the stories this week. I already asked some questions. What do you think about Spider-Man? My weird Metal Gear hot takes, my fanboy brain rot. Um, Gollum, are you playing it? Are you playing Bolt Gun? The $70 game price thing, have you just refused to pay $70 and waited for sales? Are you dealing with it? Let's talk about anything down in the comments. We will be down there as much as possible, but things get a little crazy. So of course, you can always find me on Twitter and Instagram at Jake Baldino, my other YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Jake Baldino. But don't forget the pinned comment also at the bottom of this video, that thread just drop what you're playing this weekend for our research purposes so we can tailor videos to you. Uh, that was a lot of things I just said. I apologize for throwing so much at you, but the biggest thing is uh, have a great weekend. Be safe. If you're having a holiday weekend, try and enjoy yourself for a minute. But that's it, guys. I'm Jake Baldino. See you guys next time. Pizza's all me.